We gather this morning during this Christmas season in a spirit of somber remembrance. While the rest of the world seems to be celebrating the joyous occasion, we come to the manger realizing that the world is as cold as stone. That feelings of loneliness and loss overwhelm and that our hearts cry out, help us be strong, help us. I invite each of you this morning not to hide or suppress those feelings, but to embrace them, realizing that they bring us much closer to the real Christmas story. This morning, we remember the true story, a helpless babe born into a world that was struggling, a world that was questioning where God was, a world crying out, why? A helpless babe born in a cold stone room without the joyous welcome we often picture. A helpless babe born into a family that was poor, tired, and frightened. A helpless babe who would change all this for the world. Let us begin our worship this morning, asking God to lead us through the darkness by singing Shine on Us. Oh, 
In Psalm 88, the psalmist cries out, Lord, you are the God who saves me. Day and night, I cry out to you. May my prayer come before you. Turn your ear to my cry. I am overwhelmed with troubles, and my life draws near to death. I am counted among those who go down to the pit. I am like one without strength. As we are gathered in by our God this morning for worship, bringing with us both our joys and our griefs, we are met by our God with these reassuring words from Isaiah 43. Do not fear, for I have redeemed you. I have summoned you by name. You are mine. When you pass through the rivers, they will not sweep over you. When you walk through the fire, you will not be burned. The flames will not set you ablaze. For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. Brothers and sisters, this morning we light the first Advent candle and remember those persons who have been loved and lost. We pause to remember their names, their faces, their voices. We give thanks for the memory that binds them to us in this season. Lord, surround us all with your eternal love. words of comfort from Psalm 103. As a father has compassion for his children, so the Lord has compassion for those who fear him. For he knows how we are made. He remembers that we are dust. As for mortals, their days are like grass. They flourish like a flower of the field. For the wind passes over it, and it is gone, and its place knows it no more. But the steadfast love of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting on those who fear him, and his righteousness to children's children. We light a second candle, mindful of the many sources of loss and grief, the loss of relationships, the loss of jobs, or the loss of health. As we gather up all our pain, we offer it to you, O oh God, asking that into our open hands you will place the gift of peace. Hold us, help us, and heal us, O oh God. Do 
Psalm 139 comforts us with these words. If I say, surely the darkness shall cover me, and the light around me become night, even the darkness is not dark to you. The night is as bright as the day, for darkness is as light to you. We light a third candle to acknowledge the pain of our loss in this Christmas season. We pause to remember the past weeks, months, and for some of us years of difficult times. In the poignancy of memories, we feel all the grief, the sadness, the hurts, and the fears and we entrust them to Christ, the suffering servant who is victorious over death itself. We remember that the dawn overcomes the darkness. We can take comfort in saying along with the psalmist, O oh, fear the Lord, you his holy ones, for those who fear him have no want. We light a fourth candle to remember all who have shared in our sorrow. We thank you, Lord, for their compassion, for their presence with us in times when our hurt went deeper than words could express. We remember that you, Lord, sent your Holy Spirit to sympathize with our weakness and to carry our sorrows. We thank you for those who held us and pointed to your light. Jesus announces this comfort to us in Matthew 5. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. Let us pray together. Eternal God, shepherd of your people, we feel the fleeting passage of life 
and we know how fragile our existence is on this tiny planet amid the spinning galaxies. We confess with the prophet, all flesh is grass, and all its glory is like the flowers of the field. The grass withers, and the flowers fall. Yet we also confess the word of our God stands forever. Teach us to number our days, that we may gain a heart of wisdom. We look to you as a frightened child looks to their mother, for you alone can comfort us. Have mercy on us, O God. See our tears and hear our cries, and lead us all as pilgrims through this valley of death's shadow into the light of the resurrection of Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. Oh, come, desire of nations, find a people's in one heart and mind. This morning, we hear God's word to us from the Gospel of John, chapter 1. We'll read verses 1 through 5, 14 and 18. John, chapter 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. And the word became flesh and lived among us, and we have seen his glory the glory as of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. No one has ever seen God. It is God, the only son, who is close to the father's heart, who has made him known. This is the word of the Lord, and we give thanks for it this morning. During the Christmas season, we often read Luke's account of Jesus' birth, as it provides for us a narrative rich in story and drama. At other times, we may read from the Gospel of Matthew, which also follows the storytelling form that we are most familiar with this time of year. These accounts stir in us feelings of awe and joy. They bring a true sense of fulfillment and celebration after an Advent season of waiting and hoping. But this morning, we have paused to name the truth that despite the joy of the season, we do not always feel like rejoicing. Despite the proclamation of peace on earth, we still feel the unrest and disquiet in the world and in our own lives. Despite Simeon seeing his hopes fulfilled, we still feel doubt and fear over the future. 
and despite Christ's birth, showing us just how much God loves us. Enough that he would send his own son to live among us and save us. We still feel loneliness, grief, and darkness. As we acknowledge these truths this morning, we turn to the account of Jesus' coming that we find in the Gospel of John. An account that feels more complex and yet more simplified, all at the same time. We find in this account words that we don't often use to characterize the Christmas season. But as we dig into it this morning, we'll find that John's account carries in it all the same hopes and joys that Matthew and Luke offer. John opens with the words, in the beginning. Words that rightfully bring his reader back to the beginning. These words provide a link back to the opening words of Genesis 1, where the telling of God's relationship with his creation begins. By going back to the beginning, John reinforces that this baby whose birth we celebrate is not merely another prophet or priest come to point us to God. Jesus is the Word made flesh. Jesus is God, present in all ages from the beginning, the one through whom all things were created, the light of life, that overthrows the darkness. Jesus is God, the creator, dwelling now with those he created. Jesus is the light, come into the very midst of the darkness to overthrow it. The Christmas story is one of hope and joy, but it is also one of humility and empathy. Jesus, who is God, born as a human child, taking on all of the physical, mental, and emotional realities that we ourselves live with. Jesus is born into a human family with human expectations. He lives at time caught between what he knows his heavenly father is calling him to and what his earthly parents desire for him. Jesus grows up in a small town with neighbors who struggle to accept the prophet and teacher he becomes as an adult. He expresses his anger when others have tainted that which is holy. Jesus builds friendships that bring joy as well as heartache. Jesus knows what it is to feel the weight of grief when one you love has died. And he knows the stab of pain that comes when one you call your friend betrays you. Jesus, being born an infant of Mary, cries as babies do, seeking comfort and food. He spends time in the desert fighting off the effects of hunger and fatigue as he is tempted by Satan. Jesus even deals with the very relatable experience of having dusty, dirty, and possibly even sore feet after walking from town to town. And Jesus feels the cut of the whip on his back, the stab of nails through flesh and bone, and the weight of his own chest as he struggles to breathe. John begins his gospel highlighting that this baby who has been born is indeed the God who created to show that this is not merely a metaphor. God does not just sympathize with our suffering. 
caring for our hurts, but maintaining a safe distance. God fully empathizes with our suffering because God himself has come and lived in the flesh and has felt, felt the physical and emotional joys and sorrows that we feel. God does not stand outside in the darkness and cast bolts of light in. God wades down into the midst of the darkness. He sees and feels it firsthand and he overthrows it. The good news of the Christmas story is not simply that God sent his only son to save us from our sins, though that alone would indeed be good news. But the Christmas story is so much more in that it also proclaims that by coming to live as human, Jesus does save us from our sins, but he also lives as we live, becoming wholly aware of the everyday moments that shape our lives. He comes to save us from the injustices, the fears, and the deaths that shape his everyday life. This good news of Christmas means that when we cry out to God, we know it is to one who feels what we feel. It means the God we pray to is a God who has cried and laughed, loved and been betrayed, rejoiced and grieved. This morning, as we pause to reflect on the hurts, the griefs, and the losses we have experienced this year. We also pause to reflect on the truth that the manger birth we celebrate means that God knows firsthand what it is to experience those hurts, griefs, and losses as well. So this morning and every morning, we hold to the hopeful truth that the birth of Jesus heralds the truth that the darkness does not overcome the light. The word of God has triumphed over pain and suffering and triumphed even over death. As Paul writes to the Corinthians, we are afflicted in every way, but not crushed perplexed, but not driven to despair, persecuted, but not forsaken, struck down, but not destroyed, always carrying in the body the death of Jesus so that the life of Jesus may also be made visible in our bodies. No matter if you have come this morning in a spirit of joy or of sorrow, of hope or of longing, of peace or of unrest, God meets you right where you are. As you continue to press on, hold fast to these truths of Christmas. Jesus, the Word, is born as a baby in a manger, and he is God and has been since the beginning. Jesus, who is God, heard the cries of his people and humbled himself to come and live among us experiencing all the highs and the lows that we experience. Jesus, who is God, saw the darkness threatening to overwhelm that which was created through him and came to live and die among us so that once and for all, 
he might overcome that darkness. This morning and every morning, we can come before God with, care, with confidence, even as we carry the weight of our sorrows, our longings, and our unrest, because God knows what it is to carry these burdens. We can come in full honesty, in our exhaustion, and lay these before the feet of our God, because by his birth, his life, and his death, God has offered us the grace of his yoke, which is easy, and his burden, which is light. So come, God is with us. Receive the blessing and hope of his peace. Let's pray together. God of compassion, we come again to you as a new year nears. We grieve over what might have been. Loss and isolation tarnishes our experience of this season. We feel cut off from joy, disconnected from what's, what we once felt wondering if the light will indeed come. We find ourselves adrift, alone, lost. Lord, help us find our way. Loving God, hear our prayer and in your merciful love answer. The Advent season reminds us of what used to be but is no more. Memories of what was and fears of what may be keep us from the joy of today. All around us are the sounds of celebration, but joy eludes us. Be near us this day. Loving God, hear our prayer and in your merciful love, answer. This Christmas season, we bring you those sorrows and longings too deep for words. Hear the groans of our hearts and tend us with your comfort and grace. Loving God, hear our prayer and in your merciful love, answer. In the silence, we bring you our own words of need and our own words of hope. Let our fears of the darkness of the world and of this ongoing pandemic rest in you. In the quietness of this morning, may your peace enfold us and those dear to us and all who have no peace. Keep us in the truth that the night is nearly over. The day is almost here. We look expectantly to a new day, to new joys. Loving God, hear our prayer, and in your merciful love, answer. Amen. Hear these words of hope from the word of our God. May your unfailing love be with us, Lord, even as we put our hope in you. Those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him, so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. As we sing now, all who wish are invited to prayerfully light a candle in memory, in honor, in gratitude, in hope, or in love, inviting the love of Christ to dispel our darkness.
as we go forth into both the joy and the grief of this Christmas season. I invite you to rise in body or in spirit to receive this blessing from the Lord our God. And after you have suffered for a little while, the God of all grace, who has called you to his eternal glory in Christ, will himself restore, support, strengthen, and establish you. To him be the power forever and ever. Amen. Go in peace this Christmas season. <laughs>